Hello everyone to the second part of the new Dune, Dune 2000 map and mission editor. Last time we had a small look at the buildings, units, tabs here right on the uh, right hand side of the sidebar and also the terrain tab. Now we're gonna start off with the uh, menu right here, the file edit tileset and RDR stuff and then we're gonna have a small look at the uh, mission scripting so pretty much the mission settings and events and conditions uh, parts of the the editor. So yeah, let's go ahead with the uh, with the file. We can make a new map, open on or even reopen the map. So <clears throat> let's say you added all this crap here and you 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 just change your mind. You don't want this at all. So you don't feel like removing everything or closing the program or selecting open map and then browsing for the map file again. You just click reopen map and it's gonna reopen from the last I mean the last saved version it's gonna reopen it now one really neat thing is that you can actually click save map image and it's gonna save a BMP file wherever you want so let's go ahead and check it out look this is amazing it's actually uh, rendering the structures too so you can you can make previews of your missions really easily and yeah it's very very handy going to the edit you get your basic undo redo copy and paste the tile set you can select any tile set you want select next I guess goes to the next one in the list load image and load attributes well these are pretty much a little bit more advanced stuff that we're not going to cover now but they are really useful you can actually load a tile set image I guess this is for custom tile sets I believe I'm not really sure attributes th these are pre advanced things that you probably don't really want and we're not gonna cover them in the tutorial I'm not really sure about them either you get a grid this time so if you really want but this is if you really, sometimes it's actually useful but yeah if you if you need it you you have it just so you know you get a draw concrete you, you can actually disable or enable it underneath the buildings another awesome feature because they look much better with concrete underneath Mark impassable tiles this pretty much shows you where you cannot pass or only infantry Mark buildable tiles this is another great one since it shows you where you can put down buildings without problems anyway you get the uh, red rectangle red white rectangle when you're placing a structure too so yeah they are pretty much the same thing show unknown specials this is for some interesting uh, things I guess in the map like those weird area one that uh, Westwood or intelligent games whoever made the missions used in some some uh, some maps I believe that's that's what the unknown specials or maybe not maybe that's mark defense areas I don't know honestly I don't know what this one's doing but anyway use allocation indexes I guess this is gonna I didn't try it before but it's gonna probably convert everything like if this Harkonnen player here would be using the Ordos index it would be putting the buildings as Ordos or vice versa I don't know exactly didn't try it show even markers like for example when you have a map reveal or reinforcement you get a small box on the screen I'm gonna show you that real fast I mean real soon mark defense areas I just mentioned it you can set the map size or shift it to the left right up down how many w tiles you want you can change structure owner very useful let's say you want to swap Atreides and Harkonnen buildings there you go everything is swapped but well, we won't do this now and you get the map statistic this is awesome this is a very nice um, very nice thing to have you you can see pretty much all these um, good stuff here if you really need the these statistics you get here you get them here and they can actually help you a lot when you are trying to get you get the power output power percent walls even walls <laughs> it's showing you even walls a very very much detail put into this uh, yeah alright now 
I already talked about these in the last tutorial you can actually launch with settings I, I didn't configure it but once you do it you can actually use a quick launch to simply go the, the game is gonna open and the mission will be there pretty much so let's go ahead and go with the mission settings you can easily select alliances this time you get the auto set both sides checkbox so if let's say we want to ally Atreides and Ordos you don't have to do it twice you will just click somewhere and they're gonna both uh, turn into ally or neutral or whatever you want if we disable this then it's gonna be only one side you see uh, the, the Atreides are not changing allegiance to the Fremen automatically if we select it back we get both of them changing and reset allegiance if you want to have the default basic one tech levels self-explanatory same as these ones I'm not gonna go into details about this you can set the money to everyone pretty much oh that's tech level I guess yeah it only allows it doesn't allow that much I guess so yeah, you can pretty much select all this stuff here, time limit, I'm sh pretty sure you remember this. You get the AI editor here, which means that you can pretty much edit everything about the AI, so literally everything, and I'm not going to cover this right now, but maybe I'm gonna, t yeah, I'm gonna make a tutorial about these functions, some of them that are really useful, so you can know how to edit your own AI. You can select it for any side, you can simply copy paste it, you can see the difference if uh, this pretty much shows you the values that are not the defaults you can export and import it whatever you want to do now you can use the INI file uh, the new mission launcher supports and funky freshes patches you can actually change some of the rules uh, for example changing the crate cache when you collect a crate and it's a money crate it's gonna give you whatever value you put in here um, let's see what else we got death hand acc accuracy if you put it to one the death hand will never miss infinite spice this is pretty much uh, the thick spice will be impossible to deplete so when a harvester goes over this uh, thick spice these two things right here that you can see I'm hovering the mouse over them uh, it's not they are not going to disappear they're gonna sit there forever that's infinite spice pretty much you can put a map name a map author and a music play as you select your side here I mean the human player side mission number this is for briefings I really suggest you to keep on zero because people don't generally use in-game briefings anymore you would need some special additional files that we're not gonna cover now this is the briefing here it's gonna appear in the mission selector here you have custom um, in-game messages that you can see for example Harkonnen have been destroyed whatever so you can actually use the string ID in the map in the mission I mean it's gonna work now let's go really fast to the events and conditions much easier to use now much more easier to use you can simply add a new event so let's say we want to add this uh, message we just displayed. You see, Harkonnen have been destroyed. Yes, that's that's our message. Now, generally, you would want a condition for this, of course. So we're gonna go ahead and say, "Base destroyed, Harkonnen." And go ahead and click this arrow here. It's gonna add the condition. And now you hit apply. And you do remember, I'm not sure if you do remember, I made a tutorial about text messages in which if you just put it like this, once the Harkonnen lost their buildings, the message will repeat all over again on the screen in an infinite loop because the game constantly checks for the condition if the Harkonnen base is destroyed. And since it is, it's going to continuously display the message. So this is why you had to use dummy conditions and... Um, flags and all this kind of shit to have it run only one time but Clovcatch has made it really easily you just right click it and if you want to run only once you just hit this 
and you have it, it's going to set up the dummy condition, which is now called set flag in this new editor. It's going to uh, put it for you. So this is very, very useful. And you also have uh, some new events that did not exist in the old editors. For example, leave. Leave will pretty much, whenever this uh, event is fired, it's going to blow up all your units and structures or not yours but the side you are mentioning here as a parameter then we also have uh, play sound which honestly you have to put the value here but they're not referenced so I don't know I can tell you now set build rate this is going to set the AI building rate I mean the speed that the AI is producing units for the particular side you are selecting set attack building rate the I guess the, uh, the amount of in-game text that the AI will be launching attacks. Again, you can select the side. Set cache and set tech pretty self-explanatory. We got two unsupported here, didn't try them. We got play music, I guess plays... Uh, this is a string, I believe, I'm not sure. It probably is a string. So if you put it like Iraq attack dot AUD I don't know you can try it if you want I didn't mess around with this one so far so yeah, as you can see they are very very interesting and the editor is awesome and it's really really improved and I really recommend you to go ahead and read this for example you can now place any building on you for any side in order to use this feature in game you must copy the file config slash tile data dot bin in your dune 2000 data bin folder so you pretty much have to do what it says here let's go ahead and check it out real fast config tile data you copy this into your I didn't do it before I oh, didn't want to open the games thing All right, let's go ahead and do it really fast data bin you are just replacing whatever you had there and now they're gonna work in uh, in game so yeah I'm gonna come with more tutorials about this editor I'm also wanting to have a pretty consistent look on the AI but for now this should be enough so thank you guys for watching special thanks to Klovkach for making this awesome tool and for everyone else who's still making missions and uh, actually cares about this game. So, yeah, see you later, guys, and thank you for watching.